<laughs> it's going to be weird. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Adventures with Peps. We're doing something a little bit different. You can see my face. Ah, I'm sorry. Ugh. Let's move on. We are doing issue 46 of the Imperium magazine, which you can see comes with the Adeptus Serratus reinforcements. A thrilling new story. Rules and missions and seven models, which I now have all painted. There will be a painting guide later for this model, if I can get the camera. There we go. Your basic sister of battle in their standard scheme, which is this black and red one. Always forget the martyred lady, I believe is the title. Inside the magazine, we're going to get the battle sisters, the seraphim, the adeptus Seraritus. Building and painting, and then the missions for ninth. So we have Battle Sisters, Warriors of the Faith. Beautiful, beautiful squad. I really hope we get a full squad. So far, we've just got the three sisters. Next week, we get the standard bearer, the sergeant for definite. I think we also get a couple of special weapons are coming up. They look so cool storm bolters, flamers. We then get the RPG stuff. Let's go this way. That makes more sense. You know it. I hate it. So we will uh, swiftly move on. We also got a couple of these. The Seraphim Angelic Shock Troopers. They look like angels. Such cool models. I had such fun building them. Let's uh, see if we can get one up here. Ooh, there we go. So cool. Dual pistols. Angelic wings. I'm gonna have fun painting them. Now the thing is, I'm gonna be painting each one a little bit different. They're not gonna be the same. I want you to have paint guides for all of them. Quick and dirty paint guides. That's gonna happen over the next few weeks. Don't expect anything too quickly from me. There's a lot happening here. We then get the how to build. Some of them are real confusing, like the light stands for the. Uh, the Seraphim are these super funky, you cannot see that. There you go, these super thin, very funky looking clear flying stands that the sisters, you just balance them. It's hard to show. At some point, you glued the backpack to the base, but for now, they're just balancing to keep them separate. Very strange. And then, of course, there was. Nacro Flagant, Falagant, Falag, Falagant, who is ready to be painted soon. And there was the Repenter, who neither of these get mentioned in this magazine. So I assume they're going to get mentioned in the next one. If that's the case, expect the paint guides to be there. And get how everyone should look once built. You get a very quick and easy how to paint for everything, which was nice. It's different. I liked it. Goes through everyone. Obviously, the sisters are the main part of it all. And then if you followed their guide, we should have models that look like this. This is probably a good point to say like, follow, subscribe. You know you want to. I want you to. So just do it and we'll go to the paint guide. Right, here we go. We are kicking things off with base Corax white paint. So I black primed and then gave it a heavy dry brush of gray like I normally do. And then I'm gonna use this just to lighten it up a little bit more. So we're gonna get it. I'm gonna start at the top, work my way down with this crappy old brush that I've got. Use this mostly for terrain. This just gives me a super heavy dry brush. This is not fancy, this is not technical, I'm just dragging from the top down. My mind, the top of the head, is always going to be the brightest. So if it gets most of this, I'm happy. We will skip forward a little bit, because you don't need to watch all this. And with that done, you can see the effect I've now got. We're going to move on to the first of the speed paints, starting with Grim Black. This is obviously going to go all over the armor. We're going to start at the easy parts for me at least, which I think is going to be this backpack. 
going to take my time, the brush is nicely loaded, going to let the paint lead the charge, and we are going to zip through everything. Now the sisters, they love their black armor. So a lot of these paint guides are going to be very similar. Um, it seems to me that there's only a couple that actually <laughs> move away from black armor. There's one that has silver, one that has white that we've already done the video for. There is a red, the bloody rose I believe it's called. I want to try out a blue at some point, but otherwise mostly they stick to black armor and then the robes change color. So a lot of these videos I might actually start beyond this step on the model because it's pretty straightforward. You prime it, you highlight, you dry brush, whatever, and then you slap on some black paint. So with the final touches on the leg to be done, making sure we're just keeping it smooth, avoiding as much pulling as possible. Just going to catch the thigh and that should be this stage done. It's a great looking model. There's just so much detail on it. Very fiddly to paint. Not sure I'd want to do an entire army. Chances are high I'm going to end up with 500 point force at least. Do we still use points in 10th edition? I don't know. It's probably a crusade size. Well, combat patrol. It's combat patrol. Anyway, let's move on. Blood Red is up next. I am slowly learning 10th. It hasn't captured my imagination as much as I hoped, but I feel with I've got enough forces now for some small combat patrol size games, so we're going to have to have a go. But we are going to use the Blood Red on anything that's roby. So we've got the sleeves, her gloves, which I decided to go red. The guide shows them in black. I thought that looked boring, so I'm doing mine red. And then we also have the tabard that goes over her legs. This is a very bright red. Really stands out on the model. I rarely use it, to be honest with you. I normally use the slaughter, which is a darker, more blood-rich colour. So this bright red is a very nice change of pace for me. Now, as I mentioned, these models have so much detail on them. Trying to get into all the crevices are very annoying. Looking back, what I probably should have done if I was being a clever boy is I should have painted the sprues first, or at least got some base coats on first. Not as fun to watch for you guys, but a lot easier to get the paintbrush into certain places. As I spun the model, looking at it now, I did see a little white patch hidden away next to the leg. It's right in the back. You will not see it when it's on the table, but now I know it's there, so I'm going to have to go in at some point and fix that. But there you go, the model is taking shape quite quickly. We've got the red on, we've got the black. The whitish grey works for the rest of it. You could probably get away with that. I went in and cleaned up a few areas with the white paint, where I just overrun with the red too much. And talking of red, we are now using Slaughter Red, which is a slightly darker red. We're just going to pick out some details. There's some switches on her, especially on the backpack. And her bolt gun. I love a red bolt gun. I am from second edition, which was when Space Marines carried red bolt guns. Sorry, the camera's gone blurry right now. But um, yeah, I'm using Slaughter Red for the purity seals and the red bolter. She's got to have a red bolt gun. Also, her eyes need to be red, which are so tiny and fiddly. I'm going to have to go back and clean up the white again on the helmet. Very annoying, but just trying to take my time, be as neat as I can, and we'll be back with the next colour. Okay, I've let that dry so it doesn't bleed anymore, and I've grabbed the Absolution Green, which is a perfect Dark Angel Green. If you've recently got the Lion, or you're painting up your Space Marines as Dark Angels, I am using this for the two grenades. So she has Frag Grenade on one side, very easy to pick out. This is a super quick step. And then on the other side, not entirely sure what they are come equipped with. Might be a smoke grenade, might be, I don't know, melter or crack, whatever it is. We're painting it green. Just a little bit of colour helps 
make it stand out a bit. With that quick step done, we move on to the next one, which I'm also hoping will be relatively quick. It is the hardened leather. This will mainly be for the belt, the pouches, and some of the thigh straps. Like I said, we got a couple of quick easy steps here, which I quite enjoy. It lets the main colours dry up. Ultimately, because the armor's black, I'm not too worried about any colour running. Not even that worried on the red. If you catch it, at least it will stay near the holsters. It'll look like some additional shadowings happened. But because I've let it dry, it doesn't really bleed at all, which is good. <laughs> you can't complain with that. And there you go. Like I said, very quick step. There's not a lot of brown on this model. So let's dive into the next bit. So we are going to look at purity seals next. Um, anything that's kind of ceramic in colour. And I'm going to use the pallid bone for this. Obviously it's meant for skeletons. But I find it works well for old scrolls. And also anything that in my mind would be porcelain. So I caught her little eye symbol that's hanging off the bolter and then I just flood the little purity seal. I'm not going to scribble any text on these. That's too much detail work for me. But we are going to enjoy flooding this right now. This colour lightens up a lot so I found you need a lot more on the model than you actually think you do. Just add some great depth to the model. Try to pick out the skull that's there, but it's just too red. Might have to go back in with some white and clean that up later. It's now time for everybody's favourite part of my video. I hate using metallics, so I use rune grey to represent most metals. There's some models that I have used metallic on, like the Canon S, who I painted a few weeks back. She got some metallic work done. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it, i got to be honest. I wish I'd have done a yellow over a silver to give it more flat colour. The metallic, I just find it bugs me on the models. It looks wrong. It's purely in my head. Some people make it look amazing. I'm also not going to do non-metallics. I don't have the patience for that. So I'm just using this colour represents my metal. I'm happy with it. Let's just move on, right? Okay. <laughs> As you can see, I start on one side of the bolt and just work my way around. It is the only part of the model that's got it. So that is another super easy step. These sisters are stupidly easy to paint. And now I think we're closing on the end here. So with the holy white, I'm going to cover anything that is left shown white so we are looking at the little uh, I always forget what these damn things are called it's a French word that's why I keep forgetting but anyway shoulder pads the the little fleurs face mask I'm also going to go back over these with some white a very gentle dry brush just to lighten them up before we finish but this is going to be the last step to be honest with you not a lot else that needs painting on it. So I'll wait for this to dry, grab some pictures, follow this up with a picture. You can hit like, subscribe and all that wonderful stuff. And then we can go back to the magazine. Cheers for watching. Now, if I've done that correct, there should have been a pink out there. Hopefully there was. We'll find out later. We then get the 9th edition rules for the Battle Sister Squad, the Seraphim Squad. But not the other two. Interesting. So they definitely got to be in the next magazine. Little tutorial on how to use their re-rolls and angelic visage. There we go. Got there in the end as well as how they sky strike in. 
And there's a battle report. Head for the surface. Which involves a lot of piping. And some runes. Let's see what we got to do. Right, scout mission. Engage and eliminate. Mission brief. Myths the scarred smoking husks of the buildings. Imperial resistance spreads forward, obliterating any who stand in their path. Forces in play, the Necrons get their overlord. Only two immortals, two scarab swarms, and the Wraith. The Sororitas get the Canoness, three battle sisters, the two seraphins, and three assault intercessors. I would say that feels like an Imperium win. Hmm. The Wraith is strong, don't get me wrong. Scarabs without the spider aren't going to be that scary. Two immortals is pointless. Overlord is good. I think having the full... Uh, actually, I completely misread that. It's intercessors, assault intercessors. I was thinking of the, uh, the bigger guys. I've forgotten what they're called now. My brain has just completely died on me. This is how it looks when I have brain farts. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's actually a lot closer now that I realised it's assault intercessors. And that's the normal space marines. Hmm. The Wraith could cause problems. That's a closer battle than a few of them have been of late. And victory points are... You score a point for every unit destroyed and two for destroying the Warlord. So it's pretty straightforward. That's... Run at each other, kill at each other. Next week we get... The Pink Horror and Wild Rider Red. Very nice. And that must have the rules for the two models that we didn't get rules for. Oh my god, more terrain. And then we get more terrain. I am going to have enough to make an entire ruined city at this rate. But yeah, we got more terrain coming. Anyway, if you enjoyed, hope you like this new look. We'll try and have my face more often in videos. I'm a bit awkward. I hate having my face in videos but i'm trying to get over that so i hope you enjoyed give me a like give me a subscribe and i'll see you next week